Oh, yeah, Arena CDF. I want to see the loadout again. Because we definitely got to talk about some stuff with how this layout is. <clears throat> so again, I got to prove a point with how many weapons are on this map. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. I mean, one thing to start off with, again, the, the looks of these maps look great. Even just the, the skybox. Like, this shit looks good. But here. So, <laughs> okay. Why is there a BR? But there's going to be a BR in both bases. A pulse carbine in both, base, both bases. There's a commando in the bottom of the base. You go over to the right. You know, snipers on each corner. But then there's a bulldog if you go to the opposite of where the sniper is. And there's a bulldog on the other side of the map as well. Over there. There's another commando in the middle of the map on both sides. One right there and then another one right here. You go down to bottom mid. And there's a needler with a fusion coil that you can pick up and just be chucking. Stickies. A repulsor. More stickies. More, more nades on both sides. Again, this is all symmetrical. There is a camo top mid with a repulsor bottom mid, as well as a grapple in both bases. Oh, and there's even more stickies. Was anyone keeping track? How many fucking pads are is that right now? Let me think. That's one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then Needler, 9, and then like a Fusion Coil. We'll count that as like fucking 10. There's like 20. So 10 times 2 is near 20. Plus Camo Repulsor. And then I didn't even include Grapples. So that's like 24 fucking things to pick up in the game. At any given moment's notice. Oh, and there's a Disruptor. Oh, okay. And there's a Disruptor. I didn't even realize that. <laughs> what the fuck? Holy shit. And there's a Disruptor. Just wait till it gets buffed. Then you're gonna be we're all gonna be raging about that one too. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. Again, man, that's just it's just a little that not a little too much. That's a lot. That's way too many that's way too many weapons. That is just way, way, way too many weapons and things to be like working off of. Like this just shouldn't be a thing. You know, a grapple up here on each side of the map, you know, that's kind of interesting. All right, I'll give them that. Honestly, most equipment, like, I think is used sparingly enough that on most maps, it's okay. This is three equipment, all in a straight line, two grapples, one repulse. Honestly, I'm all right with it. That's okay. Camo top mid, honestly, perfectly fine. Chilling. I don't think there needs to be a commando bottom of the base. You know, maybe top of the base. Or, I could say bottom of the base, and then this pad is just gone. Pulse Carbine is just like, no, man. Like, you know, maybe take off, take the Disruptor from where it's at now, put it right here. We don't need two Pulse Carbines and Commandos and, like, another BR. A, BR doesn't need to be here. We don't need extra BR ammo on the map. It's just kind of useless. Like, doesn't need to be there. No one's run running out of ammo, like, ever. Nades here are kind of like, eh. I just, I honestly didn't realize how many nades there were on this map, but it's just kind of ridiculous. That alone is going to make the map, I think, way too hectic than it needs to be. Do you think the buff weapons will make it harder to GA weapons? Can good teams still beat teams ignoring GA. Um, if it, it does make it really hard to GA, like literally everything, because at that point, or GA a lot of the weapons that just got buffed because that will be the vast majority of the sandbox. Um, which at that point I just don't think should really be the case. It's just one of those things where it's like it, it does suck that 343 and like HCS really put us in this type of scenario where they're not like compromising in the slightest. They're just doing whatever they want and then there's like zero impact that we're allowed to give in terms of like some things. And especially how they understand, like, how we view a lot of these things going on. Like, they, they know the impact that they're going to have with a lot of these decisions. I don't know, man. There, there's a very, there's a lot of weird decisions right now. Especially, like, there has to be a coexistence of opinion 
on like the matter, especially from the player side. Like that's why we've GH shit, and they know with all the GAs going on, it's like the solution was not to make everything way better, at least from our end. I think those are mainly for the like just the broader casual community, which I think is that's kind of normal. Like everything kind of needed to be a little bit better for most players to have fun and enjoy the sandbox. It's kind of understandable. Kind of sucks, but it's understandable. But that's like why, again, it's like certain versions of things can still be applied, I think, to each map. Like, for example, like if every commando, let me see, commando has 60 shots. If this commando had 30 shots in it, I would be a lot more content, I think, to not have to worry about like talking about GAing the commando. But that goes for every map. Even if there's only one or two commandos on a map and not four, that should still apply. Like everything should easily have like half the ammunition it has, and I think that would alleviate a lot of problems that we see with uh with like the GA talk and everything. Uh I'll be honest, unless you have the backing of anything to match Halo, I don't think making a Halo like game is very likely profitable or like feasible I, th I think it's something that can be done I think Splitgate's probably the closest thing that it has gotten to it and it still has like its own gimmick I just don't think people are willing to give anything else like a very good like a very good try and even if they do they are not gonna stay I guess is what I'm getting at why do pros have such a problem with the fusion coil and skewer, but they'll accept rockets? I mean, skewer is perfectly fine. Skewer is way more... Skewer is literally serves more as a sniper rifle. And, like, I think most people can be okay with the skewer. It's kind of annoying to play around, and that's why most pros get annoyed with it. Rockets, they spawn every three minutes, so there's only ever going to be four of them in the game at a time. Typically only three, because a fourth one spawns at the zero second mark. So typically only three rockets at a time that net you two kills, like, guaranteed if you hit them. And sometimes they just don't kill. And it's like they can maybe kill other people and they can maybe kill your, like, you can maybe kill yourself. So that's why, like, rockets are, like, they've always been, like, a gimme and it's understandably a gimme. And they're always in, like, a not easily accessible spot that's just, like, free kills all over the place. That's all it is. Um, what bottom line is, is like, Argyle should be very easy to work on compared to like any other topic of discussion we've had before about like putting sidekicks on the map or changing ammo for certain things like on dev maps. This should be way easier and it would entirely be in 343's court to actively and easily change these factors for just the ranked community. And they would only affect the ranked community. Like, there should be a version that we can just be playing on that is strictly for comp that doesn't... It's not, like, a universal setting, you know? Yeah, I think this was, a uh, Somebody had mentioned, or they, they had mentioned, that this was actually, like, a map that was made in Halo 5 Forge previously, I believe. Nice. Um, but now it just it has, like, a completely different coat of paint. Yeah, this map does look really good, though. How much percentage? 77%. I mean, it does have a lot of detail. It has quite a bit of detail on the map, so... I'm a fan. I'm a fan. It also looks, I will say, it looks worse only because that I don't have... I don't have a lot of, you know, the video settings cranked as well, so... I mean, the FPS is holding up pretty well, though, overall. I think that's going to be the only problem with some, at least from like a competitive standpoint, like certain maps are going to have to be optimized strictly for the idea of competitive because like the lighting, like it needs to be almost minimalistic, but still, you know, at least have something that just isn't blocked out. I mean, it looks, it does look quite good. Is this a lift? Again, if this was like a competitive map, it'd have to be like a, uh, I don't know, like maybe a strongholds or oddball or something like it, it wouldn't have it wouldn't would not be uh symmetrical map. coils and all that all that shit it's got a very good look i'm happy that just the quality bar for um you know these maps are so much higher now
That was always, you know, the biggest drawback for quite some time, even with Halo 5. Some of the maps still look pretty solid, but this definitely looks, you know... If I'm going to compare it to any other map, it's like Recharge has, like, enough minimalistic, like, good... It's, like, pretty minimalistic, but it has enough, like, detail that it can still kind of pop, and, like, this is what this reminds me of. Even of that kind of quality. And all the other maps still have a very similar way of going about it. I think Streets probably is, like, one of the better looking maps and has a lot of density to it. I mean, even, like, the density to it still looks very similar to all of this. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing about, like, competitive maps in the first place is, like, you can kind of get a vibe for, like, how things could play, but, like, you really don't understand how things play until you literally play it at the highest level. So it's like, I even now, I couldn't really tell you, like, oh, yeah, this would be perfect for comp, or this would be absolutely dog shit for comp. My first impression of those, like, probably wouldn't be the best. But, I mean, again, we play a lot of different... Uh, we've played a lot of different maps this year with Infinite, like how it's turned out, so... More symmetrical maps, better for comp? Uh, not necessarily. I would say symmetrical maps are probably the easiest maps to make competitive because, you know, when everyone has everything available to them equally, like, it's kind of hard to mess that up unless you just have bad sight lines and geometry, but, um, yeah, overall, it's, I would say it's pretty easy to make that happen. Okay. That's enough for this map. Looks good. Looks very good.